Bury FC is one of the oldest clubs in English football. But in August 2019, it was expelled from the Football League. We're heartbroken. Just got it. One group of fans decided to do something about it. I want my kids to be able to grow up from a football club. Come hell or high water, this is, you know, it's the right thing to do. Kick ourselves if we didn't. This is Berry. This is Berry. With complete access for 12 months, we see what it really takes to build a football club. Most stressed I've ever been. <laughs> it was a dream. You know, it's now becoming a reality. We're very impressed with the candidates. <laughs> We too Not getting paid anywhere near as much as the, the Premiership players. Everyone here is doing it for the love of us. We're good enough to feel that way. But no, but we didn't. Yeah, yeah, but I know we didn't. With divisions in the fan base. That I call rats, thieves, looters. And in a year where footballers face its biggest crisis. All UK football matches have been cancelled. Could have picked a better time to do this, couldn't we? The fight to bring football back to Bury. Six foot four gentlemen getting the world's smallest car. Football. He's come into a football club and he's ruined it for uh, for a community. It's still not a football club, so we've got nowhere to go, nothing to do. It's almost like a member of the family's died. I mean, he's dead to me now. I, I don't I don't want to watch any football. Yeah, if it wasn't for Steve Dale, we probably wouldn't be in this position. I wouldn't be chairing the football club, um, and I'd probably be enjoying games back at Gigglane, but. You know, he's done what he's done, and I can't change that, really. This is the show that looks at the money behind the beautiful game with me, Kevin Day, and football finance expert at Liverpool University, Kieran Maguire. We're talking about the demise of Berry. Berry Football Club is, is the story of, of two men. The first was called Stuart Day. Whilst his other businesses were successful, everything was fine, everything was hunky-dory. Stuart's other businesses then collapsed. I wanted to do a bit of a video with regards to what's going on at Berry Football Club. I worked at the club um, briefly in like a self-employed role and I had a few issues. Absolutely rubbish the way that things were going under um, Stuart Day. And he put the club up for sale very quickly and he sold it for a pound. The start of a new era for Berry Football Club, led by the man on the left. When Steve Dale came in, I thought, all right, OK, things are changing, things are looking up. We're just all got our fingers crossed. You can't buy anything for a pound these days, let alone a, a football club with you know, 130 years of history. We're going to restructure the debt. That's the main thing. But what I'm not is an ATM. And within about six weeks, you also stop paying the wages for the staff, the players, and everybody else connected with the club. It's a total of dismay. You know, there's people worried about the families and, and how they're going to support them, because obviously we've not been paid. It's running into 12 weeks now. We're all here to say very football club. And I'm prepared to go to any any means. It's noisy here. It's angry here. If I go, don't come back and blame me. Steve Dale had to prove to the Football League that he had enough money to run the club. 
or sell it. Otherwise, Berry FC would have to stop playing football. Things have developed, actually, just in the last few minutes. We've just had a statement from the EFL, which says that Berry FC have had their membership of the league withdrawn. For it all to, to end like that, um, just so sad. It's devastating, just not for the fans of Berry, but the, the entire community of Berry, really. You know, for me to walk away from Berry and never go back is, is a very easy thing to do. 134 years of history brought to an end a community in shock. I didn't realise how much I, I miss Gig Lane and how much it means to, to the fans. My son is buried in the cemetery next to Gig Lane. We had a little boy, um, he passed away 20 minutes after he was born. I used to obviously go to the go to the cemetery um, and then go and watch the game. And I just have them few moments because where his headstone's facing, it points towards the it points towards the ground. It was my release from what happened. Hopefully one day we can be back there and I can do the thing of going seeing my little one before a game again, but this time as chairman instead. Normally, I, I'd park my car, go in through that gate, go and take my seat, usually about three to four rows away from the away dugout so that I could give grief to the away manager. You think about the good times that you've had here, the games that you've watched, the fun that you've had with your mates. It's a bit heartbreaking, really. Sort of tried to avoid coming down, in all honesty. There's no doubt where many thousands of the town's citizens are on Saturday afternoon. This is Gig Lane, home of Berry's league football team. Berry FC has been part of the community since 1885. The winners of two FA Cups and one of the oldest clubs in England. the season. Carnival time all day. We knew we were promoted and yeah, it's been a great day. There's not more times we get to finish champions in the league and to actually be the captain for the day. Going to party tonight? Yes, yeah, certainly. We're going to have a few beers tonight. <laughs> it's been three weeks since Barry were kicked out of the league. The Stanley Club was a match day pub for many fans, including Adam, his sister Hannah, and their friend Helen. This used to be hustling and bustling before matches, and it was packed. You couldn't even get mm. to the bar. Yeah, our family going back. It's mm. it's years worth of of, uh, of following this team. It is a community, and when that gets taken away and it's out of your hands, that's what's the really frustrating and the heartbreaking thing about it. They have asked about at what point we come back, and at the moment they can't give them an answer. So it's that's the the, the heartbreaking thing mm -hmm. because you 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 want to always want to be able to give your your children an answer. Yeah, big part of life ripped away. In October, Berry fans get one day of football back. One of my friends basically said, would I be interested in helping him put something on? Chris has helped organise a charity football match to raise funds for the future of football in Bury. It was still raw. It was still raw for people and they were still upset and worried. The match isn't at Gig Lane. The ground and Bury FC belong to Steve Dale. So the game is at the Nuvin Stadium, nearby in Radcliffe, instead. And, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to give them something to smile about. I think it's a brilliant coming together of community in celebration and recognition of the club. 
um, I'm supposed to be being induced and they wanted to, me to be induced ASAP and I uh, said, can it wait till Monday because I wanted to be here. There's just very mean so much to us all. Brilliant sound of fantastic on Both teams are made up of ex-Berry players. I didn't see any of the game, I was, um, I was too busy. I think the only time I actually properly saw the grass that they were playing on was when I was walking around at the end of the game. They've managed to raise over £14,000. We've got a lot more people who are feeling a bit more positive. Because I think today, what has happened today, shows people what, if we all get involved, what we can do. I, I feel a bit emotional now at the moment. Um, all I can say is Bury Football Club will be back. Ball rise. After the charity match, a group of fans, including Chris, Adam and John, decided to create a new club from scratch. They're local builders, marketers and engineers with no experience of running a football club. Sat there and spoke about what the plan was, how we wanted it to work, you know, that we wanted it to be for the fans, by the fans. Some fans get on board with the idea of a Phoenix club. For others, only the return of the original Berry FC at Gig Lane will do. I want Berry Football Club back at Gig Lane. It's as simple as that. I felt like I had a bit of a, a, a responsibility to the people of, of Berry to actually look to try and help in whatever way I could. Where are we going at the moment? We're going to Newton's. We're uh, going to my office. Chris is working on the Phoenix club in his spare time and everyone involved is a volunteer. It was not an intention when I first got involved to be doing this right now at all. It was born out the frustration of Steve Dale not doing what he needed to do with the football club. You think about it and go, well, I've got, I've got two young boys at home. You've obviously got three kids mm -hmm. who, are all, who are all Bury fans. And I, I, just, I just look at it and go, look, I'm, I'm doing this so that, so that my two lads have, have a football club to support. We're doing it. Because we kick ourselves if we didn't. Christmas is approaching, and the first major decision for the Phoenix Club has been made. The fans have voted, and it now has a name Berry AFC. But tensions are rising in the town. The original Berry Football Club has no team and no manager, but it still exists. And some people think the focus should be getting Berry FC back on its feet instead of starting a new club. It's always a good start when somebody comes over to me and goes, I'm going to ask you some awkward questions, it's nothing personal. Fans are here to discuss the options for bringing football back to the town. I don't know what's going on here, I'm, wait I'm waiting for this to take off massively. Chris needs to put forward the case for the Phoenix Club. I understand that it's the case of you want to watch Perry FC, I want to watch Perry FC. But last year was the first season I was able to take me on this lad to watch a game. He absolutely loved it. This year, I can't. It's killing me. But he has competition. The Phoenix Club isn't the only option on the table. I'm a big supporter of the underdog. And I think at the minute, Berry is the ultimate underdog. You need so much about Mathematically, it is doomed to failure. You could tell there was a lot of emotion in the room, which is understandable given the situation. There's people who just want Bury FC as it is in its current form. I think that we will all come together. I really do. And that's all we need to get Lane to rise again. The problem that it is when people have different opinions, it splits the fan base, and it is already split. All that and all, Merry Christmas to all. If you can enjoy yourself.
people are venting, you know. Yeah, sure, it's some of the stuff that gets said is horrendous. Fuck the phoenix. It's that icon of rats, thieves, looters. It doesn't bother me, some of the things that get said. It really doesn't because, you know, I'm a big boy, I can handle, I can handle comments. When we get a football club out, hopefully they'll, they'll change their mind and start to come and watch again. There hasn't been a football match at Gig Lane for eight months. Today, supporters of Yorkshire Club Rotherham are making a stop in Bury before their away game in Rochdale. You know, we come to support them on his way to the team. You know, to keep him <laughs> going in business, keep it, the community going and we can help, we'll help, because it's a shame what's happened to the club. We're going to win 2-0, up the Millers, up the Millers. <laughs> John and another Berry AFC volunteer, Simon, organised the visit. We have gatherings in here with meetings and stuff, and there's been like about four people playing snooker in the back room. We all got up at six o'clock this morning. We met in our local pub at eight o'clock. We've had a breakfast. We've travelled here. We'll be back home for half past six tonight. That is football. That is what is all football's about. And these poor lads are missing out on it. All the pubs around our old ground completely shut down. They don't exist anymore. We've seen exactly what it's like. It is, it is horrible. It's so important to just keep these going so then when we do get back in September, no, August, September, first game of the season, we can all come in here and say, you know, we tried and we kept them open and we kept them going. You know, we live in a cynical age. And I think once people really realise uh, in the town, what the Phoenix is trying to do, they'll get behind it. You start to see more and more that people see it as being a serious thing. They don't see it as being, oh, this is just a group of 13 to 13 to 15 idiots that are involved in creating something that are just trying to drive some of Our club has a second chance. But the EFL, yeah. not fit for purpose. Not fit for purpose. It's very easy to sit in a committee room somewhere and lose a 135-year-old club. And they seem to not hold themselves responsible, and I hold them responsible. And so it's us, the people, who will make sure that football gets played again. Damien Collins is an MP. He chaired the committee that investigated why Berry collapsed. It's really brought home that football league clubs in particular are nothing without their local fans. They, they, they cannot function as businesses without fans coming through the turnstiles to watch them play. And what's shocking about the way football is run is that fans often have no or little voice in how their club is run, who's allowed to acquire it, and yet they're the ones that pick up the pieces on behalf of the community when it all goes wrong. The football authorities faced some tough questions after Berry was expelled. The Football League, the Football Association, the Premier League for... MPs want to know what financial checks took place before Steve Dale bought the club. It's just stunning to me that somebody takes over and doesn't have to really, just has not to, to, do, to provide you with anything, any sort of financial plan or anything, uh, before you get the go-ahead to take over the club. I mean, I find, I find that extraordinary. Don't you find that surprising? He was then asked to provide the financial information you offered. He didn't do that. He did not do that at that point, but he had already purchased the club at that point. The EFL said that Steve Dale bought the club without showing them he had enough money to run it, something Mr Dale disputes. If the Football League had imposed its own rules properly, I believe Berry would still be playing in the Football League today. It's time for the Rotherham fans to go to their match in Rochdale. It shows that even though the maybe the football organisations might have forgot about Berry Football Club, but the, the fans and the, the football family hasn't forgot about Berry Football Club. I would like more or less crying again today. It's just seeing the crowd that we're in and the passion that they had is what we had with, with the Berry fans. 
and it's so sad when they all go down thinking, well, next week it's going to be close and you've got nothing like this now. It's such a shame. In September, you didn't know if you were ever going to see Berry again play football. Now we're in March, it looks a lot more bright. There'll be football in August no matter what. BBC News, football postpones its professional programme. All UK football matches have been cancelled. Professional football in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland has been suspended because of the coronavirus outbreak. The FA's postponed all Premier League, English Football League, International and Women's The coronavirus games. pandemic means that every football fan across the country gets a taste of what Bury supporters have been experiencing since last August. Life without football. <laughs> Three weeks into uh, quarantine now, and I can very much assure you that life is not the same without football. I'll tell you what, I'm missing football so badly. Not being able to talk to your mates about what the result was. I've been trying to keep busy. Boy, do I miss not being able to go and watch them on a Saturday afternoon. That match on a Saturday is a bit of escapism for everybody. I'm trying to make sure that my football skills are still in place, ready for when all, all this finishes. And there are worries some clubs won't survive the pandemic. We are now the bookies' favourites to follow Berry out of the Football League. Lost Berry, which was a real tragedy, a famous club that I'm very fond of. Nearly lost Bolton. There's others that are hanging in there by threads. I don't think another Berry is likely. I think perhaps dozens of Berries are likely. There's no if, it's just a case of how many. I'm working out of my kids' bedrooms. Just, I just want my, I just want my office back. Just doing me roof. Um, I looked over and you can see, you can see you It just seems like a ghost town, like over there. We're going to have a, a launch event. Then obviously everything happened with the coronavirus. Despite the pandemic, Berry AFC decided it's time to launch and allow fans to become members. It's five pounds a month, and they'll get a say in the club's future. We said, well, if we got 250 members in the like the first six months, then we'd be happy. We've got 325 people signed up, so we've already surpassed one of the targets that we wanted to hit in six months. We've, we've done it in like seven days, near enough. And they've begun to hold their meetings online. Next was uh, management recruitment. We can't control it. We'll just carry on doing what we're doing until we're told otherwise, really. I saw uh, on LinkedIn that you've updated your job status. Needs must. You know, the things you need to do. I was, I needed to put someone out for, like, trying to find where we get the best training equipment from for, for the players, and it was like... Just thinking, oh, people are just going to think, yeah, this is, you know, this is just some nobody who's asking for, for help with it. So I thought, oh, yeah, I'll have the official title of it now. It's, it'd been confirmed, it elected the board. It was all sorted, it was great. We've put the badge out for a vote, we put the kits out for a vote to, to the members. We had a great uptake on that. I mean, like, we've got over 500 members now, which is brilliant. With lockdown restrictions eased, Berry AFC have started securing sponsorship deals. And today, they're holding interviews for a manager. We had eight people that we interviewed, and now we've got it down to being that it's down, now down to the final three. It's a big decision for you to make. Yeah, it's massive. It's you, but yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, it's massive. And what happens if you get it wrong? Then sat the board. So, a short the centre half, who are you ringing? Where do you think you can take the role? How would you manage the expectations of those fans. Because you know, it's new to me as well, and it just firing at any point. So go get him. We'll see if he's we'll see if he's ready. Come on, sir. Right, thank you for uh, agreeing to come back in and see us again today. Do you think you'd be confident in having, you know, a, a team out for a that first friendly and then work on it for getting it for the start of the season? What what would you do differently if you were to get this job? In terms of you then, ambitions. What's your ambitions? Do 
I think I know which one would be the number one that I'd go with. Mm. And I think we sort of all agree yeah. with who it, who it would be. I think it's the full package, isn't it? I think that's the right fit for now in the position that you're in. It's dead exciting. It is. So exciting. Yeah. See if you can get a team out for that first friendly. Like, yeah, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure on you, lads. Cool. Cheers, guys. It's been a bit of an eye opener, really. First time of interviewing anybody since the days when I used to work at KFC. I had been 21, so yeah, I'm 33 now. So yeah, it's been about 12 years since I've done an interview. So I know it's a bit different serving chicken to running the football club. But yeah, it's, it's feel good after that. But this is happening. This is happening now. While Berry AFC are waiting to find out what league they're accepted to, Steve Dale is pursuing a league place for Berry FC too. The club's got no league place in. It's got no infrastructure. Um, it's got no players, no manager, no staff. You know, and we've not heard of him. In, we've not heard of him in months, apart from the odd article that goes out in the paper. Berry FC still exists, still owned by the unpopular Steve Dales, but there's no prospect of any football being played by this club. Last week, it was denied a place in the National League. Berry FC's league application was rejected. But Berry AFC have been accepted into the North West Counties League Division One. Meaning we start off at the like the very bottom of the non-league pyramid. It's the tenth tier of English football and seven steps below where Berry FC were. But it's another step closer to getting football played again in the borough of Berry. And today, Berry AFC are announcing their new manager. Fucking huge! Simon's screen on the thing. Just trying to you know, make it professional, make it work with the brand, because we technically we don't have an office at the minute. I never had to pull them apart, I've only ever had to pull them up. There we go. Oh. Local news outlets are here to report the announcement. And they're getting a first glimpse of the away kit. Away, away kit and the in my office, ready to go for the friendlies. Yeah, kids and kids. I'm delighted to be joined by Barry AFC's first manager, Andy Welsh. This town is a hard working town. That's what I'll demand is a minimal out of a player. First season, um, there's no doubt about it, we're up against it straight away because we've got a short period of time to build a squad. <laughs> Adam is working on the press release. Andy was someone we saw in the role from the moment we met him. He's a good at the football. Shone through, off shone through. It's a great team that the fans can be proud of. I don't write press releases very often, so dra drafting something, researching his history, you know, remembering where he played and what we want to say and the message we want to get out. It, it, I started it and it took ages, so, it, you know, I, I was up late doing that last night, and it, it, yeah, it's hard work. We are at uh, Goshen um, Sports Centre, and it's where we hired for the year for the training facilities for the team. When they used the pitches, we used to look at it. It's a big pitch, isn't it? It's a good yeah. Yeah. No, it's spot on. Yeah, no, yeah. it's the key to the name. Yeah, that one. The guys have done a tremendous job. You know, there's a box tick now, and now it's play recruitment for me. I've got to look them in the eyes and see if they've, they've got that hunger and desire to represent this football club. We're happy to, to trust Andy with bringing in who he thinks will fit that, will fit that mould. Unbelievable work to get to this stage. Mm. Um, it was a dream. You know, it's now becoming a reality. I've had messages saying, if you are currently still with the manager, please can you say welcome. Almost a year ago, Berry FC were expelled from the Football League. I lost my chin. Back then, Joy Hart handcuffed herself to Gig Lane and she has decided to return. Every day, I feel the pain of losing Berry Football Club. Joy's father was a player and manager at the club for decades. They named the South Stand after my father, the Love Heart Stand. She's good. Yeah. Isn't she? You do miss her. Oh, my goodness. It's awful. 
it really truly is like it, it was like a death and still is isn't it we're still mourning it doesn't go away does it the hurt and pain and the anger doesn't go away I have nothing against the phoenix club nothing at all I am a Berry Football Club girl. There is only one Berry Football Club. Let me stress that. She doesn't want it. She doesn't want anything other than Berry Football Club to be going, which is fine. That's not a problem. I get that. There's a lot of fans that only want Berry Football Club at Gig Lane. Berry AFC won't play at Gig Lane because the ground still belongs to Steve Dale. He shows no sign of selling Berry Football Club. And even if he did, the club comes with enormous debts. I've said this numerous times, people. If we had the money to pay off the debt that was put forward by you know, Steve Dale and Stuart Day, then we'd have sorted it. But we, we, we physically can't, so we've had to look at other options. Massive, isn't it? So this is Zachary and this is Ben. So Zachary's six, Ben's three. Actually, I'm six and a half, almost seven. Okay, six and a half, almost seven. These these are my two little boys. Oh, oh. <laughs> Zachary was still in the yard at school, weren't you? Yeah. And Maxwell's daddy told you that, that your football club was dead, didn't he? You said my football team's never coming back. That was it. Football team's never coming back, weren't it? We've got to that point where we've actually created a football club. Yeah, but can't we just start the game or what? Tonight, Berry AFC will be playing their first friendly game at their new home. Can't wait to see them play today for the first match. I wish um, the original club was still here, to be honest, obviously, but. I'm just, I'm just glad I can watch, you know, support Berry uh, back in a football league. To be honest, this is what I wanted football, but it's never going to be Berry FC. It's a new era. It's already divided. The there will be divides. There will be divides. Definitely, yeah. For why? Why are the divides about? Because there's people just don't want to come and watch AFC because they're just staunch Berry and still believe that there's life there. That's what I mean, yeah. It's because the it's because Barry FC is not dead. So and he's still there and keeps Who's he? St uh, Steve Dale, yeah. Well they're gonna say the name, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> this evening on Rope Trail Radio we'll be live from the Newman Stadium for Radcliffe against Barry AFC. Radcliffe in their in their home blue kit. Uh, Barry in their uh, away maroon and, and gold. 
point. Yes. Number 11 takes Ooh. a shot and hits the, hits the post. <laughs> Chance here for Radford to strike us through. Keepers come out quite far. The ball's not to the left. There's a chance here with a man on the line. It's a goal. Oh. Radford takes the lead. Great save, but there's, oh. there's going to be a tap in there for Radcliffe. It's a lovely ball flew straight through, play. and it's a great goal. Goals. And that's it, that's full time as Rafa 3 very AFC 3 0. I just felt somebody watching some football that I actually cared about. Just felt good. Any football's good for me. You had fans behind the goal singing, We love you, Berry, and come on, Berry, and all that stuff. And at that moment, I thought, that's great. That, that's that's what I was hoping for when getting involved in it. He Initially, makes... getting involved in it. It makes it worthwhile, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, was that going in behind yeah, the yeah. scenes? So I've, yeah. You know, nights like tonight, it's, you feel like, yeah, this, this is worth it and it's going to be good. Show that. Yeah, I'll see you Saturday. The reality of it is, I think, you know, I was speaking to you guys three or four weeks ago and we didn't even have a team. You got a one Chris Murray chance, well. I did. I did get a one. I did. I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did as well. He was brilliant. He, he really got the sort of hairs on the back of my neck sticking up when, you know, you hear fans shouting that chant that we've not heard for so long. What are the main emotions right now? Tiredness. Tired. We've done all this in our spare time. For the last 10 months, the news section of the Berry FC website has been quiet. No official statements had been released since October 2019. But that all changed a few weeks ago. Now, Steve Dale has released a number of statements. That's fine because there, there, there is only one Bury Football Club, but there's also a Bury AFC. He can come out and put those, those statements out all he wants. That's fine. We'll all read it. We'll all have a chuckle at the things that are, that are funny in it. He's been our best salesman for our memberships, to be fair. It's the day that Berry AFC have been working towards for months. Long road in it to get in. They now have well over a thousand members, sold over a thousand shirts. They've won some friendlies. Absolute They've lost some friendlies, but today is the big one. First competitive game. My dad said it was the first time he's ever got up and actually thought about football for a long time. Covid restrictions mean only 45 Berry fans have got tickets for the cup game, away at West Didsbury and Chorlton in the FA bars. Bit sweet, really. It'd have been nice to have all the fans here and everyone that wanted to participate yeah. and enjoy in. Was it? Mm. You're on the healthy step. Well, lunch time, and I haven't had for 48 hours. <laughs> and, that's, and for somebody who is my size, that's not very good. <laughs> I've been busy getting moaned at left, right and centre about different things. More stressed I've ever been. <laughs> the competition's one that, obviously, the finals at Wembley. I know that's yeah. a long way away, but we've all got that in our heads. Since we last met Adam's sister, Hannah, in the Stanley Club, she's had a baby. I've already got her a uh, Barry AFC shirt. But it's back. It's different, but it's back. Football pyramid. The foundations of it are in bits and nobody's talking about it because everyone's talking about the fact that Gareth Bale's coming back to Spurs. I'm like, bigger picture. Starting to get people coming in, starting to fill up a little bit. I've got a buzz on me now by just watching them warming up and seeing people and seeing what's going on. I think once you kick off and you can get behind the team, that'll be when football's back for me. 
Does it feel like your team yet? It does because it's representing the town and it's the people. I've known Chris for 15, 16 years. It's nice to actually see people you know taking it over. Well, I've been going to Berry, but I went with my dad, and uh, obviously I became a father in January when Berry didn't exist. And I thought that's the one thing I wanted just to take my dad. So this is her first football game as well, so hopefully, you know, in the future we'll be able to go together. Ahead of the match, Berry AFC have a message for fans. To the people of Berry, nobody would have foreseen the circumstances in which we now take to the field with limited crowds and the world turned upside down. Thousands of hours have been put into creating this club. It is by the fans and it is for everyone. If hard work conquers all, then we are already winning. You've urged us to bring football back to Bury. At 3 p.m. on Saturday, we'll have done just that. This fact alone makes us all extremely proud. It's a chance. to go, see what happens. If West can clear here, if they can get a good counter attack, they... well, there's an open goal to aim at. Can he do it? He's got the pace for it. Oh, this is brilliant for the road. The key oh! oh! First game and the best thing about that is the only way is up. You was running at him though. Get a free, he'll get a penalty or yeah, a free kick, or he's in the box. That that's what a good striker does. Yeah, yeah. He could have, he could have got, he could have got us a penalty. He should have gone down. down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what's great about this though? Take a step back. We're talking about football. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, we've been here today, the fans have been together, they've been chanting, they've been singing, there's been shouting, and it's brilliant to see everybody coming together again. You know, the results might not always go in our favour, but we're doing this together and, you know, come hell or high water, this is, you know, it's the right thing to do and it's just going to be epic. I mean, what an amazing thing to say that you've, you know, been putting a football club together, that you've helped build this journey and hopefully, you know, in years to come, we can look back and think, you know, this this has, has been brilliant, what a, what a massive achievement. I, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered that we've lost, which is rare. It just after over a year of having no football to watch, it's just nice to watch them. It's good to 
to see the passion today and, you know, long may it continue. I'm proud, I'm disappointed, um, but I think that just makes it real. It, it, you know, it is a real thing we've done. Um, um, so I can happily go home and have my tea, possibly have a beer. It was entertaining, I'll give it that, with the, how feisty it was and how the fans were, um, and, you know, some of those people giving abuse to players. If you want to just point your cameras just over there, there's it's one who was doing it. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we've done what we set out to do, we've created a football club. Pat yourself on the back, mate, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, tired. I'm too tired to even reach my own back at the minute. I'll get myself a massive pizza as well while I'm at it. Right, let's Google map it home. Been a pleasure as always. Goal last time. This time it's into the penalty.